What's happening, everybody? Welcome to the stream today. I hope everybody's doing good. Uh, so we're going to continue working on that crinkle, uh, the aluminum crinkle ornament sphere. So let me switch views real quick. It's set up on the lathe. There it is. Uh, we did a little bit of work. I kind of sort of got it in somewhat of a... <laughs> Uh, spherical shape a little bit uh, but now we got the the jig set up and we're gonna just work with the jig and, and get this thing into a spherical shape but man this thing's looking pretty cool uh, these these aluminum crinkles are really an interesting material uh, especially when you add curves they're already kind of curved you know if it was just if you just stuck it in, in like a, a I don't know something flat they already have cool shapes in them, uh, but then when you add, uh, you know, uh, round, rounding them over, the edges are really cool. So can't wait to see how this thing turns out. Uh, whoa, wrong way. Uh, should be pretty fun. Uh, so far, we haven't had any issues with uh, adhesions or anything like that. So uh, we'll just have to kind of, oops, that's the wrong one. Well, <laughs> we'll just have to keep our fingers crossed and uh, add a little CA glue. And I think uh, we should be able to get through this with no problems, I think. so. Anyway, uh, how are you guys doing today? Uh, it's uh, Wednesday. Uh, technically, I, I don't know, most of you guys pro maybe could probably know, Wednesdays are, are my, my Fridays, kind of, because uh, my wife and I decided to take Thursdays off. Um, that way we can kind of miss crowds and do all that stuff, and we aren't, you know, Monday through Friday workers. So Wednesday's always kind of fun. Uh, we might even, I don't know if this is, I don't know if it's a good idea, but we might go out to dinner tonight. They've opened up restaurants around here it's kind of I, I don't know how to <laughs> we may still just get pay, uh, takeout but we'll see i don't know we want to support our local restaurants because they got really screwed during this downtime uh, but anyway let's see who's in the chat here dominic's here and ray jen's here doug's coming later nice uh, let's see jim's here sweet susan how's it going denise and ellis Amber, how's it going? Uh, Kim, Anna, Mike McEwen, how's it going, man? Maple Tree and Daryl. I, I might have, did I miss anyone? Christina, I don't want to miss anyone. I think I got it. And Chad just showed up. What's up, man? So uh, anyway, I think that's uh, the the that's what's on the the list of things. We're gonna turn that crinkle sphere. I, I got a comment. Somebody was really mad at me because I didn't use the sphere jig last time, even though I said I wasn't gonna. Uh, so uh, hopefully they will uh, enjoy this one because we actually get to use the sphere jig the whole time. Now there's not a lot going on, you know. It's it's if if <laughs> it's a jig and you're just going to kind of move it around. It's just it's locked in place. It's not the most dynamic turning that you can do, uh, but it will lock in that spherical shape with no problems. It's a it's a very simple way to get a sphere. Of course, you can just use you can do it freehand, and I've done that myself. Uh, I've, I've had good luck and I've had some really terrible luck. What can end up happening if you go freehand and you kind of run off the rails is you're just going to keep whittling the thing down, you know, trying to get it in, in, in a spherical shape. So this will kind of keep you on, on the rails, let's say, with, in, in the boundaries and, and you can preserve as much material. So it's, a, it's, you know, I understand that like the artistic value of doing it by hand is one thing, but at the same time the jig... Uh, you know, if you're unsure or maybe on a project that you're like, I, I really don't want to waste the material, the jig's not a bad way to go. Uh, so I've had some good luck in, in a couple of bad times with this Carter Sphere jig. And I think that the reason that I had problems was because I didn't have it set up properly. Um, so far, I, I've been getting really good results. Everything's set up properly. Um, the big test is going to be, I want to get something larger on there. That's where I ran into problems in the past. Uh, was on larger spheres. But again, I, I'm pretty sure that I had the cutter uh, way too high, which um, I'm not surprised that it was digging in. Hey, Anna, thanks for the, the super chat. I just saw it. I appreciate it. So, anyway, getting jiggy with it. <laughs> so, I, uh, hey, what's up, Tony? How's it going, man? James from New Orleans. Nice. Awesome. Ukraine. Welcome. That's cool. Welcome to the stream, Tom. So anyway, uh, a couple other little announcements that I wanted to make before we get going. I don't want to hold everybody up and, and babble, but uh, last time I mentioned that I uh, Illumilite just set up an affiliate program and I'm an affiliate of theirs. And I put a link in the, the show notes of that video. I also just, I'm, I'm just starting to figure out how all this stuff is working, but it's pretty cool. They actually, 
uh, give everybody a code as well. So, so I have the link and, you know, links on my website and, and in the videos and, and anywhere that I, I post links that are going to Illumilite's website are going to be my affiliate link, which just means if you click that specific link, it, it lets Illumilite know that I referred you to them, basically, and I get a, a referral bonus from them. It's a really cool deal. Um, but they give everybody a code as well. Uh, and so on your first time using the code, it's, it's a one-time use, but, but not still, pretty, pretty awesome. Um, Any time that you use, the, the first time you use that code, you get 10% off your order. And this is not like something, you know, every once in a while, Illumilite will have a discount code going around. Um, this works for the first time that you use this code every single time. So it's kind of cool. Like, it's just, it's always going to be there. And the code is Zach10, uh, Zach10, that's it. <laughs> Pretty simple, Zach. Oops, let me type. Let me. I got to get my thing in the, in the in the little bar. So I'll just type it out for you guys, Zach. It's, it's exactly how I said it, Zach ten. So if you and, and you don't even need to use any links or anything like that. Um, just Illumilite.com. If you need to pick up supplies or anything like that from their website, um, enter that the first time. You get ten percent off your order. I'd probably recommend waiting. Uh, I believe now. I'm pretty sure that the, the one question that I, I, I haven't been answered yet. I don't think that the question I had for them was, does this work for anybody? You know, like, or, or is it they, they, the way they said it was like first time. So I, I need to double check on this, but I can't imagine they would set this up and have it where if you've ordered from them before, you don't get the 10%. So um, let me, <laughs> I want to double check on that. I haven't been able to get a hold of Taylor over there, but I can't imagine they would do that. So um 10% off your order. I'd probably wait, you know, stock up on some stuff and make that 10% go even farther. <laughs> or don't wait and just stock up on a lot of stuff. So uh, pretty cool. And so there's already a link in the, the show notes of this for that has my affiliate code and everything. And all the videos going forward will have that. Uh, I have it on my link tree on Instagram and I have it on my website. So if you need to order stuff, uh, if you use my link to get there, uh, every time I get a referral bonus. And then again, that Zach 10 code will get you 10% off the first time you use it. So it's a pretty, pretty awesome little program. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. They, they, they're taking care of <laughs> all their affiliates pretty well. So, and you guys too, I think it's great that they're giving you guys discounts. So uh, I just wanted to mention that. And then let's see, I think that's about it. Oh, one other thing that I want to mention, anybody that doesn't get the Woodcraft magazine catalog thing, Carl Jacobson, let me just, look at that, resin and burl, enter Carl Jacobson's world. He got a front page and then like a, a big write-up about him and Robin, uh, what they do. Uh, and I thought it was cool. It was a really awesome article. Uh, so if you're not like, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to show you guys right now if you don't have it. But um, I thought it was really neat. And they, the two things that I like, they really did a good job on the article explaining what Carl and Robin do, you know, like all the different stuff they do, uh, along with their, their mobile trailer workshop and everything. Um, the other thing that was cool was they totally spotlighted resin casting. Um, actually, the whole front, like, first three pages of that, that catalog was all resin casting stuff. Um, and they also spotlighted, um, what's her name? I always want to say Cheryl Crow. It's not, that's not her name. <laughs> uh, what's her name? Jess Crow of Crow Creek Designs. And they spotlighted her and some product that she has, as well as Scott Grove was in there. So pretty cool. I, I, I thought it was neat. So, yeah, you can't use it outside of the U.S., I don't think. Um, I don't think that House of Resin, I don't know, you might ask House of Resin and see if they'll honor it. Who knows? They might. Um, so they don't ship to Hawaii, really. Huh. Well, that's no fun. Everybody's like, well, this sucks. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. But anyway, I think that's about it. Oh, one other little quick announcement that I, that I wanted to share. If you guys have been following along with the drama of my truck, we've finally fixed the problem, I think. And I don't think I'll be running off in the middle of streams going to pick my truck up or dropping it back off. Um, some stupid... Oh, this is so stupid. I've been in there like a hundred times trying to fix something. They've replaced the axle three times. They've replaced my hubs and bearings. <laughs> once and what it is it's some plate when it heats up uh it's like on the back of the rotor it's like rubs on the rotor that's what it was so it was i i will give them one thing it was such a weird thing uh and it only happened when it would heat up with with like brakes and the rotor heating up 
but good lord. So at least it's fixed and my truck sounds great again and <laughs> doesn't make a big racket. So uh, let's switch to the casting. That's not it. That is the wrong view. Let's switch to the turning view. Let me open up my U uh, YouTube app, app allocation. So uh, a couple of things. So I kind of went through quickly how this jig works. I'm going to re reset this thing up. I'm just going to kind of touch on some of the basics with this jig. I am not a professional Carter jig, you know, person. I, I, I'm still kind of learning the ropes with everything. But basically, you kind of mount this thing. Let me make sure that you can see what I'm doing. Yes. So you mount it to your lathe. You need to get this thing um, lined up with the center of, of your sphere. And then you have all these little doohickeys and tools and things. And so what I've done here is I've made sure everything's all set up correctly. I'm, I'm centered where I want it on the blank. And what I've also done is I've modified this. I, I created my own bar that'll accept a negative rate cutter. I just find, you know, most of the stuff I'm doing is going to be um, resin and wood. And so I've created this bar. It uses the negative rate cutters. In hindsight, what I really should have done, this is a CI3 cutter. I should have made it for, and I'm probably going to make another one, probably would have been smarter to use it for, uh, to make a bar for the, the CI5, the smaller cutters. You probably do better. Um, that's the cutter that's on the number one hollower that I like using for larger blanks. And again, it's just, it's, it's going to take a smaller bite, which is just, you know, going to lead to probably better results. So eventually I'll probably switch that out or probably maybe just make another one. I don't know. But uh, anyway, so the big thing that I've found with this, and I think that the problems that I've had in the past is I accidentally have had this cutter above center line on accident. And if you do that, you generally run into problems. You don't want it to be above center. You really want it to be dead on at the center of the blank. So let me, let me back this thing out a little bit. And I'm just going to kind of show you guys. Let's see if I can get the camera set up. Sort of. So you can kind of see where it's hitting. You can kind of see that center point there. And... I don't know if you guys can see that. Actually, it might be better to, to come back over here. Oh, whoa, where are we at? All right, so I've got my cutter set. And with these negative rate cutters, you know, you, you, it's not gonna be the top of it, it's gonna be the side. It, it rakes down a little bit. Um, but I've got it set to, to be hitting right in the center there. So we're good to go. And so far, with this thing set up properly, I've been getting really good results. All right, so with all that being said, that'll kind of give you an idea. What the heck, my I got cables and cords and all right. Uh, you kind of get the idea of what's going on with this thing. Pretty simple. I got my dust collection set up. We're going to run that. It gets kind of dusty. I'm going to, this thing can actually come off. Uh, what I want to do is I want to mount it so that it's, it's straight. And so basically what this is doing is it's just locked on an axis. That's going to give you a sphere and then you just take a pass and then you use this little knob thing. Let's see if, let's make sure I'm use a little knob that goes in and out. So you take a pass. You don't want to take a lot. Uh, and then, you know, forward it, advance it a little bit, and then just keep going. It really doesn't take all that long, but it is, you know, it's, it's not, like I said, it's not dyna dynamic turning. <laughs> You're just kind of wiggling this thing back and forth. Uh, so let me lock this thing in place. Now, one of the nice things about this thing being able to move is sometimes you need to you know, you're running into things like the, the base might hit your headstock or something. And so it's nice to be able to kind of be able to move this and get it into certain places. But most of the time, you're just going to have this thing pretty much straight on and you're good to go. So again, I am not an expert at using this thing at all. So, um, Carter and actually, I think it's actually the, the, uh, what am I trying to say? Craft Supplies USA has a really good video on how this thing, how to set it up. They have one video on that and how to um, use it properly as well. So, which I go back to all the time. Let's see here. Let me, I got to open up my YouTube app so I can see the chat. See what you guys are saying. And there we go. Okay. 
Oh, there I am. I'm talking about Craft Supplies USA. Doug's here. What's up? Getting seasick. I know. I did it for you. Do yeah, thank thank goodness my truck is fine. It, and it was like so stupid. I knew it. It sounded like something stupid. And they were like, oh, I think it might be the bearings. And I'm like, really? <laughs> Three axles later. Is it the bearings? All right, so dust collection on. Let's see if I can. Um... Hmm. I'm going to start up and I'm going to start taking some passes. I'll try and get some good camera angles of this thing in action. Maybe something like above looking down. Just kind of move the camera around so you guys can kind of see what's going on. Um, I also want to bring up my tailstock as well. Always good to have that going. All right, so let's fire this thing up. You don't really need to go very fast necessarily. Let me go about 1500 maybe. That ought to be good. All right, now, <clears throat> I did a decent job on this side. That's fairly spherical. Uh, this side's horrible. So I've got a lot of stuff to take off on this side, nibbling away. And, uh, but it really doesn't take all that long. You'll, you'll see how kind of how quick this thing is. I'm gonna, I know, you're getting seasick again. I'm gonna be working on the other side of this blank, so it's kind of, there, that, that might be a pretty good view for you guys. Hopefully. Actually, let me drop it down a little bit further. So you kind of see what I'm doing. All right, and then uh, let's see here. So I'm gonna see where, where am I at here? Kind of did a little bit of work on this already. <clears throat> okay, got my face mask on. We're ready to rock and roll. Oh, that's too big a cut. a little bit big. Alright, so not much to it. One thing that I do is I, I kind of stay away. I don't really want to get this cutter jammed into this, this deeper material. I'm, I'm going to come back with the, the tool rest and kind of nibble that away down the road. I'm trying to keep this strong right now um, as I go, but I just I want to kind of get this thing rounded you know, from here to here. And I usually just kind of back off and back off, and then I'll come in and kind of clean that out with my regular tool. Um, so you kind of do both at once. This, you know, as I as I go, I found that kind of is the the best way to to kind of approach the, everything. in there. But we're already making a lot of progress here. really doesn't take that long and the better you are at already establishing a kind of a curved spherical shape um, the, the quicker this thing's gonna go but I think that the nice thing is even for people like me that don't I'm okay on this side for some reason but I, I have trouble establishing that on on the opposite side 
So, I mean, even for people like me that, that don't, you know, I didn't nail this at all. The jig kind of saves the day. You don't have to worry so much. Alright, so I'm going to come in here and just kind of clean away some of this material with my, uh, with my number one hollower. Back this thing way out so I don't make, make sure that that cutter's not in the way. <clears throat> and so I'm just going to kind of take away some of this material so that I'm not digging into it with the, the jig. And then you can go to the other side too, I wasn't paying attention. Time to start doing some work on this other side. I'm going to back it out just a little bit to see how, see how it's looking. Ooh. I'm taking a big chunk, so I'm going to back it out a little bit more. got good support on there being a little bit more careful than I might on just a normal resin blank because of this crinkle sphere or uh, aluminum crinkle Like I said, not the most exciting thing on the planet. This is uh, probably a little bit better for zoom speed to watch, but that's eh, kind of fun. At least it's easy. I think that's the nice thing. Once you get everything set up, the way jigs work, then everything goes pretty simple. All right, so let me stop real quick, see what's going on. What's Doug doing? Doug's gonna get a mini skirt to turn in. Will that help with the shaving problem? I don't know what you guys are all 
what you guys are up to over there. It's getting nuts though. Let me get my air hose tangled it feels like. Okay, so how's the view? Is everything looking good? You can see this thing's already coming together. It really doesn't take all that long. Almost got it spherical already on, on the top here. So I'm going to get you guys kind of lined directly at it. So I mean, it's it's really close already. I do have obviously a lot on this side and this side. The nice thing about this jig is this is the only side that you'll have stuff left, you know, in the end. Um, it'll it'll take everything off on this side. You just take the tailstock away. So I'm going to come in here and kind of thin this out just a little bit more on this side. Uh, work on that and kind of clean it up with the the jig. And then I think we'll start kind of getting on this other side and we'll get this thing spherical. And then we'll just kind of work. Like I said, I like to kind of just chip away at this, thin it out with the regular tool, and then come in and, and hit it with the, the sphere jig. All right, so. Uh, another, if you guys want to see another video, uh, you'll have to kind of go and search for it, but uh, I was actually just watching on Illumilite's channel. Um, they did a thing over at uh, Scott, the Scott's Mini Workshop. He does the Star Wars spheres, and he shows, his, his methods are all really fast and simple. Um, if you want to see the Vermec jig in action really good video actually it, it I I watched it yesterday and I, I already have some little Star Wars miniature things on on the way I want to make one of those there's actually a few of them okay so we come back in and we're gonna do a little bit of turn in here the number one hollower I think I'm a little like way high right now that's why I'm getting a kind of a weird cut. That's too low. Okay. There we go. That's cutting like butter now. more work here. I'm 
back this out just a little, just a little bit. I'm just taking my time here, like I said. I'd rather, I'd rather take my time and end up with something at the end rather than a projectile. Whoa. That wasn't good. You can see there's just a little bit of a flat on the top, but I mean, it's pretty much spherical at this point. So again, I'm gonna come in, we're gonna kind of nibble away some of this material. Try and get a little bit farther in on this side before we switch to the other. Uh, or pull the, pull the tailstock away, I should say. One more round with the cutting jig, circle jig. Probably should have backed that cutter out while I was doing that. But in fact, I don't want to back it out right now. Come back in and get this. So now you can see that I'm, I'm starting to run into problems here. And this is where being able to adjust, change the, the position of this head comes in. I think I can get a couple little cuts here on the top. But yeah, it's, it's hitting this. Now I can take some material away here. That wouldn't be a bad way to go. But you can also... I'm going to back the camera out way. Show you what I'm doing with this thing. Also just, I'm going to turn this off while I'm adjusting. So you can move this thing where you're still getting the same angle, but I can, I can extend this further. And it can get in there without this bar hitting that. So there's there's a couple nice little things that about this jig. I think they all kind of do the same thing like that. But let's see what we can do here. Again, I'm always kind of a little bit cautious because I, I just I've only used this so many times. And with this kind of weird material, safe. Rather be safe than sorry. <clears throat> a 
What are you guys seeing? Not a whole lot. Let's see if we can get you guys in here a little bit. Now again, this is where it probably, I think I'd rather have the CI-5, the smaller cutter. Because it'll just be able to kind of get in and do things like this a little bit easier. You really don't want to bury that cutter in that corner. That's where you can kind of run into problems. Okay. And one other little thing that I, I typically do for anybody that's thinking about this jig specifically, I don't know how the other ones work, you know, but I don't have any experience with them. But one thing that I do, this thing does, you know, one of the things that people like about the Vermeck uh, and, and some of the other ones, I. Definitely with the Vermex, it seems to be pretty, you know, rigid. But this thing can play. Let me, let me get this camera in here. And this is, you know, some of the people that use the Vermex, they don't like that about this jig. And I kind of agree, but at the same time, if you know what's going on, it's really not like it's that bad. But it can deflect, you see? A good amount, you know, reasonable amount. But at the same time, this jig can also do you know it can it has a pretty large capacity and i think that you just lose some rigidity because of that so what i do sorry moving the, <laughs> moving the camera again the way that i deal with this is knowing that it could deflect a little bit when i take a cut let me back this thing out a little bit when i take a cut i'm actually lifting up I lift up on it a little bit and, and take my cut. And that way, if, if I run into problems, I can actually, you know, drop that down and like back the cutter away a little bit. I, so on one hand, you know, the ones that are super rigid are good. But at the same time, like if you ran into a problem with that, it would be probably just jammed into your blank and you probably would have more problems. This gives you a little bit of an escape route as, as long as you use that little deflection to your advantage and then if you you know want to kind of ease off uh, you can kind of let that deflection go down so i don't know if that made a whole lot of sense but that's one thing that i found about this and it, it's one thing that in the beginning i was having problems with it but now that i understand how everything works i kind of use it to my advantage and i don't know that it's you know extremely like a, like i don't know how big of a deal it is really as long as you understand. Now, another thing about this jig that I don't understand the, the physics or whatever that's, that's going on, but you can also, um, uh, you can angle the whole, this big bar. It's got these two flats. It's got three flats on it. And so you can actually position your cutter to take a shear cut. And I, the thing is, I don't know <laughs> which direction the sh of shear you want. I, I guess that it helps, especially on end grain, when you're coming around the corner. The problem is I don't know enough about which, you know, which direction you would want the bar to be um, turning on your shear. So I don't know, but it, it is capable of doing that, which is also kind of a benefit, I, I think, in some cases. All right, so let's zoom this thing in. We'll take a pass kind of around the horn and then we'll start working on that back end of this thing. And again, I've modified this bar. This is not the, the bar that, you know, the, the, the one that's holding the cutter is not the one that comes with it. So, you know, that, that I don't know. I, I don't know how that's making any difference in how this thing works necessarily. But I do want to mention that I have modified this thing slightly. Okay. Got to watch that friction. Oh, man. You guys are just getting crazy in the chat. Okay, so 
back to the dust collector. I'm actually going to turn my fan on behind me. That thing doesn't collect all of the dust. <clears throat> and I'm going to get you guys kind of off to the side here for now. While we go. This part is pretty, pretty round, I would say. Let's back the tailstock off. <clears throat> I'm gonna kind of tilt my, my thing. Now, one thing that you could probably do is, is sort of use this thing, I don't know if they recommend it, but you could probably do some of the hogging away with just the tool. I, I don't know. How, how good that is, you know, but I mean, you might be able to kind of manually do something with this. I don't know if they recommend you doing that, and I don't really want to myself, but. It's something that could happen. low end going with the direction of the cut. I guess the reason I'm I would I would probably angle it this way rather than this way but I actually think that on their video they had it the opposite way that's why I'm, I'm just like I don't even know <laughs> so don't even act like I I know the mechanics of what's going on Okay, so I'm just going to kind of nip. Now this takes a little bit of time to kind of nibble away, but not that much time really in the scheme of things. Another thing I'm going to do is actually speed it up a little bit on the end here. And I'm kind of being careful here. It's the name of the game. For the most part, it's pretty simple. Now, if you get a catch, you know, like I said, you kind of run into some issues, but I have seen a number of videos where people are using in ver its various jigs, not not like this one specifically, but they're kind of like coming in and or coming out on the edge, and like the whole thing just flops off. But again, they've also kind of cut that tenon down, so that's why I kind of leave it intact, you know, pretty thick for a while. I just think that having that support, you're really not going to have the thing come off the lathe. It's going to be a lot harder for that to happen anyway. feeling little bits coming out. Let me stop and look at this. Yeah, we got a kind of a tightly packed crinkle area right here. So I'm gonna stop real quick. I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal, but I am gonna just hit it with some CA. It wasn't like a big chunk came out. I could just kind of feel something. 
rather I could have done this, you know, from the off the bat. I kind of wanted to see how everything went. Before I started CAing everything. So while we're here, let's just douse let it kind of soak in and if there are any areas that are not particularly awesome bonded we just ought to fix it up I think I'm going to do the same on this end while we're here again I'm hard with all this stuff in the middle Kind of let that soak in. Worst case scenario, it does nothing. Most of the time though, it does add a little bit more stability. Let's see here, CA time, I know. So again, I don't, I, I want this stuff to like soak in as much as possible. However, I also do want to hit it with the, um, accelerator once I've given it a few minutes here so that CA glue isn't flying off at me <clears throat> okay just give that a second to kind of ease its way down into the cracks let's see here You've been in the shop turning, Billy. Oh my God, that's that's not an excuse. <laughs> uh, that's no big deal, man. Glad to hear that you're in the shop. And yeah, Yak Shop, uh, you just got electricity, right? I think that's what you said. Got the electric going. Yak Shop's gonna be up and running soon. All right. I think we're good now, so let's keep going here. You guys got a decent shot. I'm going to actually switch. Sorry. I know I'm, there's a lot of not much going on right this second, but whoops, there's a, there's a light there. I'm going to put you guys on this side, maybe. I just, I think this is going to be kind of a better angle. I'm going to zoom it in a little bit. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. This is kind of the business end at this point, so... Got some little chunks flying. Those darn chunks. So I'm gonna go kind of easy on this. And this is definitely a time, you know, I can feel the pieces. Now it looks like we smoothed it out, but I mean, there, yeah, oh, there's one. I mean, there's a metal chunk sticking out. If you stuck your finger on this while it was turning, it would tear you up. So you gotta really watch what you're doing if you got metal embedded in your blank. The 
the chunks could fly. The chunks can uh, scrape your fingers up. getting there slowly but surely but man look at that it's gonna be some really neat looking stuff I'm gonna hit it with a little bit more CA glue on while we got it stopped just because it's one area just kind of has kind of worries me a little bit I think it's gonna be fine but again this is not there's nothing wrong it's not gonna harm anything by putting this on and it may actually help help us reach our victory. I like to be victorious. Okay. Hearing little little bits flying out. I don't like that. I don't like hearing little little plunks. But it feels okay. Yeah, I think I think we're gonna be fine. I'm not that worried. I think I'll bring you guys in. It's kind of interesting watching this. Uh, <clears throat> hold on, seasick. It's kind of fun to watch this, the little line of what we have left. Seasick. Probably should have zoomed that out before. See how there's this little bump right here. Can't tell if you guys are seeing that or not. Let's see if I can just get you guys like right in front of where I am. So we can kind of watch this thing just, you know, slowly but surely we're nibbling it away and bringing the entire piece into, that's, that's probably not gonna work, is it? That is not gonna work. I gotta stand somewhere. Sorry, don't look at the camera. Don't do it. How about like that, maybe? Yeah, so you can kind of see this little little nib sitting. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna work either. Hold on guys, I gotta, don't look at the screen. 
I need to I think I need to get the camera on the other side. That way I can kind of stand over here. I'm gonna switch my controls to the, to the back end of the lathe here too. of a bigger cut there. So I would say here's another thing about the, the deflection that you can get on this. You know it can also give you inconsistent results if you're you know doing it kind of differently applying different pressures. So you know I don't know which way to go. I do want to try the Vermec at some point because I think that it can handle most sizes that most of us do. Um, and if it's, it, it seems pretty easy to set up, very rock solid, so I do want to kind of try that someday. But we've almost actually gotten this thing, it's almost totally, re uh, you know, spherical on, on, you know, about three quarters of it at this point. So let's keep going here. Spinning it about... 1900 RPMs or so. Whoo, man. Almost there. One more. One more pass here. to stop the lathe get you guys get the camera out of my way at this point I mean it, it's spherical we're good to go whoops so I'm gonna do yep <clears throat> definitely feels totally round at this point I'm gonna take one more one more pass to just kind of clean the whole thing up and then we're gonna start nibbling away on these in, this inside again time is it not too bad so it, you know it doesn't take all that long I'm, I'm going pretty darn slow this could be done a lot faster let me get this camera out of my way a little bit so hopefully you guys it's not hopefully I'm not going to be standing right in the way most of the time no this should be good all right switch my controls back
Okay. Bring our tool rest up, do a little bit of nibbling. Back that out. Helps to lock your tool rest down. Okay. Now I'm going to pull out and do a little bit of parting here, parting tool work. As careful as I can be. I think I'm actually going to kind of make an adjustment on this, on the tool here. You'd rather not have too much of this kind of poking out. It's not really that far, but I can also move this entire black bar. Um, and so I think I'm going to do that. Oh, I, I got smart and put a magnet with my Allen wrench. Let's stop and look at, see what you guys are up to in the chat here today. The sanding, well, the sanding's coming on. Uh, the, so the truck, I think, is fixed. They finally fi figured out what was going on. Twenty. Oh. <laughs> Not one more. Yeah, no famous last words. <laughs> I'll just take one more pass. Uh, all right, so let's let's do a little bit of adjusting here on this thing. There's a lot of adjustments and things that you can make, which can be nice, can also be kind of a pain. I just want to kind of get this thing out a little bit further. You'll notice that you kind of, there's, there's a lot of weird stuff going on. We got this, this knob here, so this thing can't go any further than that. Um, but there is another hole, you know, so it's, it's all adjustable and, and everything, but I think that I think that the I would say that the Vermec is most likely a little bit less, you know, fumbling around. It's a little bit straight, more straightforward. It looks like but that doesn't necessarily mean it's better. It's just just different. Okay, so now that I've gotten the fumbling done, let me back this thing out a little bit. I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get the camera over to kind of show you what I'm up what I'm doing here. Show you what we're looking at. Alright, so I've just kind of adjusted this and, and I'm just gonna kind of nibble away a little bit more at this. I mean honestly at this point you could cut it off. And then we would, uh, you know, switch it, put it between centers, and you can just, you know, do more work. I think I'd rather just try and get as much of this, you know, done as possible with the jig. That's just less work between centers. But, you know, we're, we're getting there, basically. So let me, let me see how I can get this camera in for you guys. Might actually be... 
What does that look like? Can't see the screen. Yeah, that's good. That's reasonable, I think, right? Just kind of see what's going on. All right, let me get my face mask and everything on and we'll keep going here. Otis, what's up, man? Welcome to the stream. <laughs> rustic pieces, that's a good that's a good one. I don't want to you can't sand it's a rustic piece. Okay, uh, where'd my face mask go? It's on the ground. Perfect place for it. Okay. Make sure everything's locked down before you start before you fire it up also. Trying to be real careful here. As careful as I can be. Oh. camera was in the way I didn't want to <laughs> knock it over but I think that that should probably be my last pass and then we'll I'm just gonna kind of come around to the other side hold this down while I start it so that it's not gonna engage the, the blank at all I think One more. And I'm gonna have to sand, you know, this. We've gotten the shape pretty well established at this point, but we're still gonna kinda have to sand some of the tool marks and stuff out, so kind of establish the, the perfect sphere shape with sandpaper at the end. Okay, I'm calling that good. Enough messing around. <clears throat> I am going to come in here real quick. I'm going to back this out. I'm going to take a couple little passes with my um, parting tool. It's just kind of a little bit of a shelf that I can knock down with it. But I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy parting this off at this point. 
and really I'm actually going to saw it off. But I just want to, oh, I'm hitting the camera with my face mask. I just want to kind of take some of this away. the job with my turn that dust collector off now finally. Whoa I missed. <laughs> Oops. Should probably get my tool rest out of here. All right, so we just have this little nib now. <clears throat> I'm gonna back you guys out a little bit so I can change over my lathe. So I'm gonna be using the little Carter. Um, you could use the rubber Chuckies, I, I have those, but I actually find the, the Carter pieces that I have are running true and I don't really want to have to mess around with truing up the, the rubber chucky ones right now. For some reason they're a little bit off. So they're just, uh, and you could just make cup centers out of wood. That's what these things look like. Actually, you know what? This one's a smaller sphere. So I kind of, I, actually I take it back. We're gonna go with the, the chucky ones and see if I can get these things to run fairly true. Um, I kind of like these guys because they're they're smaller, and for a smaller sphere like this, they'll work. They'll be able to get more sanding done. So, this is my drive center. Let's see here. You can, I'm uh, there's two different ways. You, you can you could continue using the the sphere jig if you wanted, or you could just you know use a, a, a tool on the tool rest to take down that nib. Um, it's it's up to you really. I think I think I'm gonna take this off and just see how I can do using the tool um, and then sanding it. But like I said, uh, if if you continued using this, you could you could make sure that you get you know perfect sh sweeps using this, this the arc of this tool. The one thing is though at this point, so I'm gonna change things up. Right, this center is gonna be right here. Then I'm going to bring another one up, which means the sphere is going to be, once I put this into my chuck or in, into my um, taper, the sphere is going to be over here now, right? So you have to readjust your, your, uh, your mount or, or the, the jig, I should say. So I'm just going to take it off. Let's see. Last time I used the jig to finish everything up, and I'm just kind of curious. I want to just not use the jig this time and see how that goes because really there's not a lot of work as long as you get this thing set up and running true it's not like there's a lot of work to do but man this thing's looking pretty awesome look at that I think it's going to look good it's, it's not even like can't even see in it yet <laughs> and it looks cool hey jamie what's up buddy loose change i appreciate it i'll take all the loose change you got checking those cushions you know doug just sent me something that would help with this but i don't know how to use it yet so we're gonna oh man it's stuck there we go i opened it up buddy and i'll be uh testing it out and seeing how everything goes and then we'll get some links all over the place Okay, so we got our tool rest, we got our drive, Chucky, and this thing's not running concentric. 
Hmm. Let me try adjusting. <laughs> Chucky down. Oh man, we're having fun today. Hmm. I suppose I could just turn this thing and that'll make it run true. Maybe it's just the outside that's not running true. Mm. I don't know. I just, I don't know if I trust this. I don't, the problem is I don't know enough about these things. I'm sure that you could probably fix it, but I think I'm just going to go with the Carter ones because they don't wobble. I don't think. So we got our drive. And then we got a live center side. So this nib that was sticking this way, we're just going to rotate this thing 90 degrees now. And try and make sure that that's nice and seated in there. Let's see how this thing's running. I think it's good. I think it's good. This is the part where I'm not really that awesome at this stuff. Everything goes pretty simple up until this point. Sometimes you can still, even with the jig, if you don't do this part right, you can still end up kind of whittling away material. But I think we'll be okay. I, I'm not that worried about it, but... I have run into some issues in the past. Clamps on the chuck. Clamps on the chuck. Hmm. Oh! Oh, I get it. I see. Yeah, that would have been a lot helpful. So yeah, uh, let me go. I was looking at this thing. I was, I was really confused because like with the Lagunas, one of the problems that we have is this, you know, holding the button for the, for the, the spindle lock. It does, there's no lock, right? And so I was looking at this like, how does this work? I get it now. You just stick this thing on your chuck and, and yank down. That's awesome, Doug. Brilliant idea. Let me go get a link to your Etsy. Actually, you, you, well, I'm going to, I'm going to go do it for you. I don't, I'm not even going to make you do it at all. I think this is a brilliant idea. I'm going to go find it. I'm going to search. I'm going to make people wait for this because I think that this is totally worth it. There it is. Lathe chuck removal tool. Boom. Here we go. The link to Doug's Etsy to where you can get this thing. What a brilliant idea. I love ingenuity. I love it. When we get done, I'm going to put the chuck back on and I'm going to show you how this thing works. Because that is, that is brilliant. You guys see that? Chuck would be on and you can just, that's, that's awesome. This was, I, I, I really wish that I would have known how that thing worked because it would have been, <laughs> this would have been perfect for that. <laughs> when you have something, because a lot of times I'll, I'll stick a piece of wood, you know, if it's really clamped on there, but there's nothing in the jaws, I'll stick something, some wood in the jaws, you know, whatever, but that's brilliant. Awesome. All right, take it easy, Glitch Out. I appreciate you stopping by. Yeah. Yeah, this is Doug's tool. Go and buy one. It's brilliant. 
Okay, so we got our chuck off. It would have been a lot easier with Doug's tool. Learned a lesson today. Uh, thank you, Doug, for sending that, man. That's awesome. Obviously, I need one. Okay, so let me make sure that I'm set up correctly here. I have a little mark that kind of gives me an indication. I'm way low. I want to come in at the center, as close to the center as possible here. All right, so we're good. It would be smarter if I just put a clamp on this, but sometimes I do use my um, cutting tools. All right, now let's see if I can get you guys lined up to see the ghosting that goes on. Let's see if I can do this. I need one of those boom arm things like Carl has. Let's see here. All right, so hopefully you'll be able to see the ghosting and you can kind of see where the excess material is flopping around down there. Do you see that? Is it possible? Does it help with light maybe? Can you guys see it with the light? I don't know if that helps or not, but it definitely helps me. I'm gonna stop it and we'll see what kind of progress I've been making here. It's looking good so far. We got a little bit of a nib. keep hitting the camera with my face mask. So like I said, the other way to do this is you can you can hook the, the jig back up and, and just go with that. But I mean as long as you're just kind of, you know, a little bit careful, nibble away. Should be good. Yeah, looks like I'm a little off. I don't know. This is this is what I was talking about. I, I tend to have some issues because I'm actually cutting away 
down here. I'm not actually even cutting into this that much. So I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I think there's you, you need to mount this thing correctly. Otherwise, it's going to be a little bit off when, when you do this step, you know. Ooh, it's almost gone now. I'm gonna move this thing back because I can't really get a good look. Camera's in my way. Oh, whoa. Oh. There you All right, so at this point, I'm gonna flip it. I'm gonna try and make sure that I get this thing. So I've got some kind of bumpiness on the ends now. It's really, it feels bad, but it's really actually not. I'm gonna kind of try and mount this thing. Kind of do a little bit more nibbling. Kind of mount it sort of diagonally compared to what it was. All right. And at this point, I think I'm just going to move into sanding because I could sit here and whittle at this forever. But it's it's spherical. It's pretty much. It's just I'm making weird marks on it. It definitely feels pretty pretty good. All right, so I think I am going to switch out to the smaller, the Chuckies for sanding. I'm just not that worried if they're running a little bit out of true, whatever. Not that big of a deal, I don't think, because these things are really big. And again, you can just make little cup centers out of wood or whatever. Some people get kind of you know, they'll make a little cup thing and put like rubber around it and all that kind of stuff. There's all kinds of different ways you could make your own. You don't need to buy these types of centers. But I, I will say the rubber Chuckies, they have a ton of different types of ones. Um, and then these Carter ones work really well as well. So either way you go, you'll be able to get it done. 
All right, so let me stop here. Man, you guys are chatting away. I'm missing lots of stuff. <laughs> Julie's busting the caps lock out. <laughs> That's funny. Very excited. It's an exciting time. Okay, so I have a live center one of these things somewhere. I, thought, I wanted to try the live center version rather than my... Uh, I don't know what's going on. Never mind. I'm just going to use my... Oh, actually. Nope. Okay, so we're just going to use my, my li actual live center. These things can screw on to live centers like this one. Okay. Let's do a little bit of sanding. What do you guys say? Too fast. Okay, let's see here. Face for radio. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? I have no face for video either. <laughs> it's not about what your face looks like. It's about what you're making. See how it's kind of running not true looking? I don't know if it's just me or what, but it doesn't look like it's running true. Okay. I think we'll be all right, though. So I'm going to start at kind of a low grid. I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to pull out 80. I'm going to reverse the, the lathe, just get on top, and I'm just going to do a lot of sanding here. Now, you could spend more time and get this thing you know, perfect, but you're going to just waste material. So I, I, again, what I'm guessing what happened was I didn't get the sphere set up perfect between the, between the two centers. Uh, and that's why it's a little bit lumpy, but it looks really bad right now, but it really isn't nowhere near the grapevine sphere. It's not even, we're not even in the same realm. So we're looking good. I'm going to actually spin it this way. Do a little bit of sanding like this. Just get everything. See, now that now that's looking pretty wonky, but part of that might be that it's I just didn't really get it positioned as well as I should have. I don't know. Spheres still elude me a little bit. They're elusive. We've gotten everything sanded at this point to 80 grit. We've kind of smoothed a lot of the stuff out. So, well, let's see, I, I, I'm still feeling a little bit of a bump right there. Yeah. 
There we go. That's running better. So I think you really need to be careful with how you set these things up. You got to make sure that you're you're getting it right. Uh, what am I doing? 80 grit. I had a little bit of a bump on this. Yeah, some some things don't work so well for the spoke pins. A lot of the the Duncan junk things that are super brittle or not not br I shouldn't say brittle, but may have adhesion issues. And if you get it down too thin, kind of hard to put threads in. Mo well, most of my just regular pen blanks, those things are awesome for for the spoke pens the color swirls and all that kind of stuff. A lot of the Duncan junk things. I think I have actually seen some <clears throat> seen someone do a bespoke pen out of a the, one of the honeycomb blanks. That would, you know, stuff like that, pretty fragile. You got to watch what you're doing. Got to be careful when you're threading stuff. All right. We got a little bit of a lump right there. I'm just gonna kind of do a little hand sanding. We'll get rid of that. And then I'm gonna switch to wet sanding from here on out. But I think, let's see here. First, probably a good idea to hit this with a little CA. I don't know. Spears are kind of hard to put a CA finish on. <laughs> I think it's something that you're going to have to kind of sp like spray later. So let's just go through, we'll wet sand everything. Let's see if we can just polish this because that would be a lot easier if that'll work. So let's turn this thing off. What time is it? 4.45, we're doing okay. Got a little bit more time here. Let's pull out the. Where's all my stuff? Here it is. Pull out the Sham Wow. Sham Woe. And we'll get some brand new sandpaper pieces for this. I'm gonna just continue using that silicon carbide. That stuff works pretty good. Been happy with it. So one, we're gonna start with 120. If I have that, I don't think I have that. Do I not have that in silicon carbide? Hmm. I don't know. I got 180. So we might do a little bit of 120 with Abernet real quick and then move up to the wet sanding. I'm going to I'm going to turn the camera around. I'm I'm just tearing off some pieces of sandpaper over here. So you guys can kind of see what's happening. So we got a little bit of 180, 220. A little bit of 400. This is just your, your run of the mill wet dry sandpaper. A little bit of 600. And then we'll be good to go here. So move back over here. Like I said, I'm, I'm just gonna let, let me. I'm gonna sand a little bit with the 120 grit. 
I think I'll just wet sand with it. 120 Abernet. Uh, here's a piece. So everybody's favorite part of the show, sanding time. Wee! I'm gonna put you guys on this side. I'm gonna turn that light out too. In a sec here. There we go. I'm gonna get some gloves on. Let me get my little water bucket. But it's looking pretty good. Not too bad. It could be better. It's not, you know, dead perfect, but it's gonna be definitely pretty awesome. We had no problems with the, the turning. That's what's really good. Is Jen out of here? All right, dinner time. Have a good one, Jen. Thanks for stopping by. Okay. Do a little bit of wet sanding with the 120. And it's Crocs and Socks time. Everybody's favorite. I'm telling you, I'm th these things are just wobbly. I don't know. The whole thing can move. I don't know. I don't know what's going on right now. Hmm. I don't think it's going to make that much difference for sanding, but I don't really think you want wobbly things going on normally. That's way off. That's even worse. There we go. Got it. Where did my sandpaper piece go? Hmm. Sandpaper's in the bottom of the bucket. Let me scroll down a little bit. All right, here we go. This looks like a wobbly mess, but I think everything's going to turn out okay in the end. I'm just going to do a little bit. I, I find, especially if something's not really dead concentric like that um, it definitely kind of helps to just do a little bit of extra manual sanding with the lathe off just to make sure that you've gotten all the parts uh, otherwise it could be bouncing back and you know like bouncing off the piece and skipping areas Oh man, this thing's going to be awesome when we get it polished up, I think. I'm just kind of looking at the insides of this. It's really cool looking. Oh, that's, I need to get a link. So if anybody wants to use these aluminum crinkles, I have some on my website. I forgot to grab a link to it. I'll go do that before the end of the show. These things are pretty cool. So I have, uh, I think, five colors I just decided to sell them as a pack of, you get one of each color. It's in the casting supplies area. 
pretty cool material. Uh, so a big thank you to Art for sending or uh, giving me this at, at uh, SoCal Pen Turners Gathering. Oh, whoops! Actually, I got I got to spin this thing now. Uh, got to think about what I'm doing. That's off. Yeah, something funky is going on. It almost might be easier if you just use normal, like hard cup centers. Seems like I'm I'm not mounting this correctly. I don't know why. There we go. I think that's my problem. I've been doing good. I just keep mounting the mounting the the ball wrong at the, in the end. So really be careful about when you're mounting this thing between centers. Make sure that you've gotten it set up properly. I think I might make myself a couple of just cup centers out of wood and just see if that changes anything because it seems like no matter which of these things that I'm using, it happens. And it may just be that I'm not taking enough care to, to mount it correctly. But, I mean, I'm looking at these things. They're wobbling all over the place. So... I don't know. Tell you what, I'm getting a little bit hungry though. Dinner time is coming. I don't know what we're gonna have tonight. This is our, our takeout night. The to go. Hmm. I don't know what's going on, but it doesn't look like I took out the 80 grit scratches. Like at all. Hmm. It's always good to have a good, strong raking light when you're sanding stuff. Because I'm looking at this and what I'm going to do is get a new piece of 120 grit. That one was just sitting on my counter here. Might have been a little bit worn out, and you don't want that. I'm gonna get a new piece, and I think it'll work a little bit better. Fortunately, sanding and polishing resin pieces is a little bit more time consuming, typically, than just wood. Chicken tikka masala. Oh, man. I wish we had an, a good Indian food place. That's one that we don't have. We have good Thai. We have really good sushi, surprisingly, for a really small town. Mexican food is off the hook. Uh, we got some steak houses. I, frankly, I'd rather just cook a steak at home. Um, what else do we have? Um, in this in in this area in northern Nevada, the uh, Basque people it's kind of a big deal. There's a lot of them here, so we got some really good family style Basque places. I'm trying to think what else. Mm, there's bar food and all that. Pizza is good. So I want to make sure that I've gotten all those scratches out. So I'm going to stop this. We're going to do a little bit of this hand sanding. Did you guys see Jake's shop uh, shop update thing? He mentioned he got one of those inertia sanders. I've always wanted to try those. Part of me kind of thinks it's sort of gimmicky, but <laughs> a lot of people do like them. I don't know. Darn things are pretty expensive, though. Anybody use inertia sanders? I don't know if that would really be the most amazing thing for a small sphere like this, but I was just sanding, thought I'd mention it. See what you guys have to say about them. I know, it is pretty late. 1 a.m.? 
Everybody over in Europe is up late. What time is it? Is uh, yeah, Chad's here. What time is it in Aust uh, You're in New Zealand. What time is it down on the other side of the Earth? I think you're like eight. I want to say like eight hours ahead of us. Is that right? I don't know. Something like that. Okay, I think that did a lot better. So let's switch up to our 180 grit now. It's tedious, guys. You gotta be in it for the long haul when it comes to the sanding. Your dad loves it? Yeah. Um, you don't know, they're, so they're, they're like, it's like a, a sanding disc thing on a stick and it rotates and people just hold them and I don't have one so I can't really show you but uh, where's I do have some sanding disc things. So like it, they're like a, one of these do doodads, but it's like on a handle and it rotates and spins. And so the inertia, uh, you know, it, it, it basically is rather than using a drill, it's just using the inertia of the blank spinning to, and then it makes the, the head spin and you sand. I, I don't know. It also seems like magic because <laughs> I don't exactly know how they work, but. 14 hours ahead of us. Oh. Show up in time for all the... Oh, there's a lot more work. I got to be honest, the sanding is going to take longer than it took me to turn this thing, probably. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish tonight, guys. But I will get it as far as I can. And then maybe, maybe finish up Problem is I'm not I don't work on Thursdays, so I don't know. I might finish it before the stream on Friday. You won't really miss much, you'll just miss miss some kind of higher grit higher grits, but I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to see if I can get this thing close. We're already at 180, I guess. It's not gonna take if I can get if I can get the sanding done in about twenty minutes, we'll be we'll be good. All right, I think that looks good with the one eighty. Switch it again. That's not right. See, I suck at this. <laughs> Oh my God, what is going on? Why is it so hard to mount this thing? There. Mm. I don't think I'm doing anything different. Anymore. Anybody have any tips on how to mount these stupid things correctly? There we go. Oh yeah, no problem. It's all about the angle. Marius Hornberger. Oh, you need good good technique. Oh man. All right, Dominic. I see you changed your name. <laughs> I appreciate you joining the fun tonight, man. Have fun. 5 p.m. Yeah, I'm not really into making things like that. I got enough to do. I'll probably buy it. Not like, you know, it's a good good DIY thing, but I don't know. I'm not a big fan of DIYing that kind of tool. Oh, your daughter's down there, nice. Gretchen did, uh, she did a semester of college um, in Geelong.
That was a that was a long semester. I was I had already graduated. It was pretty long long. Uh, I don't know how long is the semester like four months maybe. But the cool thing was I got to go down and visit her, and we took a basically I just went on vacation. And so we went to the uh, the Great Barrier Reef. That was cool. I, it was it was tough because there's so many iconic things you know in australia uh, but but it's you know it's like the size of the U- u.s and so you can't be like oh i want to go see the barrier reef and uluru and like you're going to like four quadrants of the the continent a lot of times for a lot of the different things so I, we just decided to pick i really wanted to snorkel the barrier reef and so we picked that we went to Cairns. And then we went down to, we kind of planned this trip a little bit not smart. Uh, If I had it to do over again, I would have done it the opposite way. We went, after that, we went to, man, I suck at this. Okay. I think it's because these things are rubber. I really think it might be easier. It should just, you should just be able to push, you know, put pressure on it and it should work i would think i don't know it's like i'm missing i'm missing something here that's okay all right so let's wipe this guy down we're gonna do a little bit of 400 grit next oh i dropped it i don't know what grit that is no one eight two twenty next Sydney nice yeah that was the other thing because uh she was close to Melbourne and in Sydney that, that area and I really wanted to see Sydney too but we had so much time I just decided to go for like I said we went kind of the northeast did a lot of cool stuff up there and then uh we went to Auckland and the reason I said we did it backwards, the problem was it was like, uh, so I think we were, I'm trying to remember when I went. I think it was like our fall, kind of, like they were just coming out of winter maybe, or I, I don't know, one or the other. It was kind of like a spring or fall down there. And so it was great in Cairns. It was like tropical. It was like going to Hawaii, basically. And then we went to Auckland, which was like going to San Francisco in like October. <laughs> and it just it was cold and rainy. And we should have gone to Auckland first. Frankly, we should have just gone to the south, southern New Zealand and gone snowboarding, I think. But so it was a little bit, the second part was a little bit hard coming off of that nice beaches and snorkeling. But Auckland is really cool, too. We had a lot. Of, we had a lot of fun on that trip. It was it was really cool. All the people down there were really cool. Everyone we met. Fun time. <laughs> Don't miss the four hundred. Oh, I know. It's the best one I know. Well, I almost I almost missed the two twenty actually. That would have been. Terrible. So we'll have to see. I'm not really paying a whole lot of close attention to this. Um, The nice thing about spheres, like compared to maybe pens uh, and and other certain certain things, um, if I'm not happy with the sanding job, I just stick it back in, in the lathe between centers. There's not like... It's not like you get to a point where you have to part it off and there's no way to mount it back on the on the lathe or something like that. Um, kind of the same, you know, you could remount pens, but if you've already, like, assembled it, then you'd have to disassemble the pen. So, you know, extra steps or points of no return are not, not a thing with spheres, which makes it kind of handy. So I'm just going to kind of, you know, I'm going to try to do my best, but I'm not going to worry too much if it's not... 
uh, you know, perfect on this first shot here. I think I'd rather get it close to perfect. Who knows? That almost worked. Ooh, there it is. Nailed it. That's running true. Did I drop my paper in here? Where'd my thing go? 220. Do a little bit of 220 here. On this side. I don't know if I already switched it or not now. Hamilton? Yeah, we and like that's all we went to was Auckland. I don't know. We enjoyed it, but it just it was and it wasn't that that we were disappointed with New Zealand after you know that that wasn't the point. It was the weather. <laughs> it was it was a week of tropical and then a week of kind of not cold necessarily, but definitely not warm and beach weather. It's a little bit more eh, tough to end that way on a trip like that. So we want to give down under another shot. Actually, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even gonna worry about it. We're gonna move up to 400 grit. We're gonna keep this train, the party train, rolling here. There might be a few, like I said, a few scratches in this one. I'll give it a, a little extra time at the end, to, you know, Friday or something. What's your wife's name, Art? Can't say hi if I don't know her name. I would be happy to. Oh, you live in Hamilton? <laughs> that's right. I was like, Hamilton, that sounds familiar. I was like, why does that sound familiar? What's going on in what's what's in Hamilton? I don't really remember. I I don't even know how we ended up picking Auckland. Like why we ended up picking that was up for that trip. Uh, last year I started watching. There's a, a YouTuber named David Jones, and he's he's in New Zealand, and he's he snowboards. And, oh, man, what is the, now I can't think of the, the, the ski resort area down there. Uh, anyway, he, he snowboards there, and it's awesome. I love his channel. Have you, do you, do you snowboard or anything? I know, summer is, I know. Yeah, so it wasn't summer, I know that. Turn Chuck for the heads. I don't know what you're saying here. Oh, I see. Just use the the ch use the Chuck. I don't think I'm gonna use the Chuck on this. At this point, it's not gonna make any difference. I'm not like sculpting this, so. But it's, I'm having difficulty getting things lined up. I don't know why. Yeah, I think so. I agree, escape. Um, I, what I want to do some year is, speaking of snowboarding, I snowboard, and, and you know, obviously in the, the summer, we, we there's no snowboarding. So I think one year... I want to do kind of a, I don't know, one year I really want to just tour and, and go to a bunch of different places. Obviously, I would probably have to be like re kind of retired possibly at that point, but um, I want to go, you know, try a bunch of different places in the winter, you know, in the northern hemisphere and then go to like Chile and I'm trying to think, I know, you know, there's uh, skiing in Australia, New Zealand. Chili's a big one. I don't know where else exactly, but I think it'd be fun to do that. Snowboard all year round. Uh, 
Okay, let's see here. 400. Did I do both ways? We're going to say that I did. I think I did. I get lost. I get, I get confused a little bit, you know. <laughs> uh, 400, so 600. Oh, I dropped that one again. Keep dropping my sandpaper. That's not a good idea. Okay. What time is it? Well, we're doing okay. I, I, I would recommend spending a lot more time than I'm spending on your sanding. I'm trying to kind of get through for you guys so that we can get this thing, even, even if it's, we can get it pretty well polished and, and at least have an idea of what it's going to look like. The problem is there's just going to be some scratches that I didn't get rid of probably. Who knows, maybe I'm doing a good enough job. Kind of don't think so though. I would typically spend more time on each grit and I would stop at the end and, you know, get the, get the light on and, and start looking at it, dry it off, and make sure that I've gotten all the scratches that, that from the previous grit out first. But I'm just going to kind of zoom through. I'll spend a little bit more time on Friday on it if I have to. That's okay. Could be better. All right, Christina, thanks for joining the fun. I'll get pictures and everything up. I'll, I'll, I'll have it on the stream on Friday too. I'll probably post pictures on Instagram Friday. So you can see what we, see how it looks. <laughs> this thing is just wobbling. I don't know. I'm not convinced about these things right now. Okay, so let's stop and see. I probably should have done this before Christina left. <laughs> should have thought of that. But now I am actually done with this sanding. I want to dry this off and let's take a peek. We'll get a zoom in on this thing and see what's going on here. I mean, that's, it's looking pretty cool. Wow. I'm digging it, guys. What do you guys think about this thing? Would you make a crinkle ornament uh, blank? Wow. It's just, it, it, every side of this is gonna be a little bit different because of the way that we stuck these pieces in and because they're spiraling. It's just, it's right here. This is my favorite spot right here. It looks like a like a sunburst or something like that, like because it's all kind of going in in like a circle. Let me get on camera here. Where's which way am I? Oh, there we go. I like that part. I really like that one. Okay, so let's uh, mount this guy back up and hopefully. Ooh, there. Did it did it right that time? I don't know. I don't know what the key is. So let me get my polishing papers out here. I'm going to get a new one. I'm going to go with some 750 grit from Zona. Mm. 
I'm going to get the other ones prepped real quick, too. Okay. Here we go, the green one. It's about 750 grit. Let's zoom you guys out a little bit. So, Mr. Mr. 750 Green. And you guys can get the Zona papers at Turner's Warehouse. I think they sell the multi-pack kits. Chad was saying he was going to get the single, the individual grit packs. That's that's usually how I buy them. I buy they're like full sheets of just the the green, like 10 sheets, 10 full sheets of it. Um and I get that on Amazon, but I think Chad was going to start carrying that as well but um, i know a lot of people just use all the grits so you get a pack with one of each a sheet a full like eight and a half by eleven sheet of each one which is generally plenty for most people thanks dave it's looking pretty neat i i, I don't know i wish you had some crinkles huh uh, chad hates it <laughs> chad's like me whatever I'm just happy that these things are working these crinkles you know my initial thought was man these things are just going to come apart so far I've had pretty good luck with them oh so I missed what's your wife's name let's see here did you tell me Where'd it go? I don't think he told me. Hmm. Well, anyway, Ar hello to Art's wife. How's it going? I hope you're enjoying the stream. He was supposed to tell me what your name is. Shame on him. All right, I'm gonna put this down there. Um, let me get some more paper towels. We're kind of zooming, like I said. I typically it would take me. I would I would spend more time sanding and polishing like this, but I can. You can kind of get away with this, and at least we can all see, you know, what it's gonna look like in the end. It just is not gonna be the best uh, representation of this thing. Because there will probably be some scratches here and there. Oh, Christina. There we go. How's it going, Christina? Welcome to the stream. Does Christina do any resin casting or turning? I'm kind of guessing not. She probably would have been at the Pen Turner gathering. She did. Soots! I didn't see. Where's Soots at? There you are. Have a good evening, Curtis. Yeah, Kim, Kim didn't. He he's the one that that uh, hooked me up with these things. He gave me some at the the SoCal Pen Turner gathering uh, for some Duncan Jung, and they turned out awesome. It was uh, one of the best. Really cool, and I've never I've never even seen or heard of these things before. Okay, so let's. Oh man, looking good. Starting to kind of. You know, with the water on it, it's starting to clear up. It's starting to kind of look cool. Man, this thing definitely looks... This thing looks like a Christmas ornament. For sure. So this is the second one. The The gray Zona paper is about 1150 grit, something like that. Some I don't know, somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000 on the P scale of, of grits. Um I tried to kind of convert it. I, they tell you what micron level it is, and I was trying to sort of back into a, a grit level on the P scale 
for, for sandpapers, and it's somewhere, I want to say it's about 1150 grit. That was the closest I could figure. All right, ooh. Every time I stop this thing, I'm like, oh, wow. It's looking good. That's eh, a little off. Eh. Close enough. Especially at this point. Kim Tippin, Kim Tippin, what's up? Do I know anything about the new Laguna Lathe? I do know that it, I think uh, I think Chad has one. And I think he was like, man, it's pretty cool. It's it's pretty powerful. It's like I don't I don't know the specs and all that stuff. I don't know a lot about it personally, but I think it was an interesting addition to like the lineup, you know, I, I think it's a pretty decent machine for what it is. Now I think the 1836 and the 2436 are, you know, better. They're a little bit more like the, the kind of flagship lathes, but I think that new one, I think it's about a 15 something, 15 swing or, you know, whatever. I think it's an interesting, I think it's got a good amount of power for the size Laguna's done pretty well with their lathes, the, the offerings that they've brought to the market. I think uh, generally they compete extremely well for the price ranges that they're in. I think I might have already done it the other way on the gray, but whatever. And you can, you know, put it like you don't necessarily have to just switch it. And it may, may actually be better to not switch it just 90 degrees every time when you're sanding like this. I am, just for the heck of it, but I wasn't really thinking about it. Might be a little bit more random patterns. So now I'm going to switch up to the the blue one, and I, I honestly have no clue. It's somewhere probably around 2,000 grit, I, but I, I don't even think I actually tried to convert it um, because I wasn't really using it that often. I'm just going to give it a, a few seconds with the blue and then we're going to buff. We'll be doing pretty good, actually. Not too bad. Like I said, this typically I would have taken longer um, to, to do this. I think it, it, it required a little bit more time than I gave it. Whoa. Not good. But I think that it's going to be really definitely good enough. And we're, we'll, we'll get a good look at what this thing looks like. They're just, there's going to be a few flaws, I have a feeling. A couple scratches that I need to go back and take out. All right, I'm going to call that good, I think. Let's dry this puppy off. Start buffing it. Boom. I mean, seriously. That's pretty awesome. I think, well, I'm off camera again. Get out of my way light. Pretty sweet. Okay. So let's get over to the, uh, let me get some, let me get something that I can stick this thing on while I'm getting everything set up. Turn the camera around for you guys so you can see the, the buffing area. Oh, what did I just do? Pushing buttons. Okay. Oh. Let me get my mask on. My glasses. All right, so the first wheel over here is the Tripoli wheel. It's kind of a reddish buffing rouge. We'll hit it with that first. I'm going to turn my light on. Make sure you guys are, yeah, you can see. So I'll just, again, I'm, I'm going to kind of quickly buff this. I'm not going to give this maybe not as much time as I normally would. Especially since I'm probably going to have to go back and sand it. I'm just going to try and kind of get through this quick so we can get a good look at it today. And then I'll finish it up and I'll give you the, the final final look at it on Friday. 
Actually, it might be, it might have done a pretty decent job. Good enough. Yeah, and I think uh, I was kind of a little bit worried that it may not look, that it may need a finish or something, but I think, I think we're going to be okay. Just polishing this thing up. I don't know which sides I did at this point. Should probably pay more attention to what I'm doing. All right, I'm gonna blow this off. It's got a few little fuzzes on it. Let's see if I missed anything. Yeah, there's definitely some scratches here and there. I'm going to have to go back and take out. But that's okay. They're not super noticeable. All right, I think we can move on to the white diamond. That's another thing, you, a lot of you guys, if you've been watching for a while, the, the streams, you'll know that I, I kind of started using the, the car polish, and I think it's kind of, because of the way it works, it'll gloss it up and kind of, it'll get you out of, if you missed a scratch or two, it'll still be there, but it just won't be noticeable, really, you know. And that's not to say that you shouldn't try to get all the scratches out, but I think, you know, the car polish does kind of give you a little bit of a bailout on that. Doesn't necessarily have to be absolutely perfect. Other things do kind of require that, it seems like, but that stuff just kind of... I have, I have a feeling that it kind of fills in a little bit. And that's one of the things that waxes will do. Um, and Some people use wax on the end of their, their projects, and... The wax can kind of fill the any any minor scratches a little bit, but the problem is the wax breaks down really quick, especially on like pens. You know, your the hand the oils in your hands will break down those waxes pretty fast. I mean, like within a week, <laughs> and your pen will be dull or whatever whatever you you know made. So I don't really like using wax personally. Oops, turn the light off because of that. Okay, so let's switch back around here. Zoom you guys out as far as it'll go. I'm gonna set up the, the car polish buffing wheel over here. You just stay right there. Let's get this stuff out of the way. I've got a lake on my little bucket here, so I'm just gonna dab that up a little bit. Okay, oh, I gotta take things out of it first. So we'll pop out the wobbly chuckies. And I'm not saying that these things are not good or anything like that, you know. I just, I don't know exactly what's going on and I'm sure that you probably just, all I really need to do is just kind of true them up somehow, but I just, I don't know for sure. I'll have to find out. tailstock out of here all right so popping in the, the tapered I'm gonna make sure that this thing's clean tapered mandrel this is a string buff they call it it's a super fine buffing wheel super you know soft and then I'm gonna use some Meguiar's uh, 105 still never tried their 205 that one I think is supposed to be even higher grit it's like finer but the 105 seems to be doing a pretty good job. And I would imagine that, you know, most any plastic polish or, or car polish 
probably would work about the same. Don't think it's like super dire that you use this. Uh, ben over at Ben's Works uses turtle wax. He gets perfectly good results. Lots of people use plastic polishes uh, on, on their projects, pens and things. So don't know that that's like that big of a deal. Yeah, the car polish, man, I'm telling you. Ben's got this stuff down. I used to just go to that white diamond wheel and it was, you know, as, as long as you did a good job, you got all the scratches out, you were fine, you know, and it, and it was pretty, pretty shiny, you know, I thought. And then I decided, I, I just, I was watching Ben's works videos and like his stuff is coming out like glass. I mean, just, it, it was amazing. And I was like, is that like camera stuff? Is it the resin, you know? And so I thought, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna try, I'm gonna give this, you know, car polish thing a shot with a, with a buffing wheel. I've tried polishes uh, like w with pens. I've tried plastic, like in pretty much every brand of plastic polish. Um, but all I did was I used just a paper towel and just while the thing was on the lathe, did it that way. And frankly, I just, it wasn't, I didn't get particularly amazing results. Um, in, in fact, I actually just tried that again, not too long ago. And I got exactly, it just, there's still scratches. Like you really, you, you can't sneak out. <laughs> you st I still have to use the triple E wheel and all, you know, do all this stuff. Um, but the difference is using a buffing wheel with, with car polish. That was different from what I had tried before. And I got to say, I, I'm very happy with it. But I, you, you really do need to get a nice, really soft wheel if you're going to be using a really soft or fi, you know, fine grit polish. You've got to kind of match those up. I, I didn't really get particularly amazing results trying to use the same exact type of wheel that I was using with the white diamond. So, <clears throat> you know, these things do kind of matter. The string buff is awesome. You can get the, a string. I got mine at uh, McMaster car, um, but Beale sells string buffs also. And I, I actually was going to buy one from them. Yeah. I don't know. I guess, I mean, I could go back and mess with this, but it looks, it looks fabulous. I'm sure if I got a, a jeweler's loop out, <laughs> I could find some scratches, but this thing's nice and shiny and it looks pretty good right now. So let me get under this light here so you guys get a good view of this thing. But man, this thing is killer, I think. Look at that. Got a big, let me, let me, let me get away from that, that big light. It's just kind of, uh, hold on a minute. Hold on guys, hold on. Let me, let me get a better angle here. So there we go. Now you just got the overhead lights reflecting, but I mean, seriously, what? And I'm really happy. I tried to just get a very tiny amount of uh, interference powders in there and it worked. Kind of what I was hoping for. There's a little bit of fuzz on here too. Let me let me go get a uh, towel to, to wipe off some of this fuzz and stuff. But man, boom. Just hints of that interference powder. There's, there's some good stuff in the middle there. So I don't know. Uh, it, we made these on uh, a live stream a little way, a little while ago. Julie, thanks for the super chat. Nice. I didn't see that one earlier. All right. So to back to the intro cam, what do you guys think? I'm digging this thing. This is, this is, like I said, and, and you guys kind of could see, I, I kind of stopped short. Like it, like it wasn't dead. Perfect. You, you could see a little bit of a, a kind of ghosting, and so, you know, but I, this thing though, I mean, if I hold it in front of my face, it looks perfect, you know, so don't be afraid while the thing is on your lathe. If it looks like, I mean, if it's like really wobbling, there's, there's a problem or if it's like way out of shape, but if the thing looks pretty round, 
you know, and, and there's some ghosting going on, it may not be as bad as it looks. Um, but again, uh, really, really focus on trying to get this thing lined up when you, you know, after you've hacked it off and you're just going between centers, I really think that that is the worst thing. That, that's my biggest problem with these uh, spheres is getting that thing to, to sit right in my cup. So I'm gonna try and maybe make some just, you know, regular cup jaws and just see if like a hard jaw works better on these things if I don't have as many problems. It may just be that you gotta take a couple extra seconds to get it lined up though. I don't know, <laughs> I'm not, I am not an expert at turning, you guys know that, but uh, really happy with this, uh, with this sphere. Uh, and so a big thank you to Art for, for introducing me to these awesome crinkles. And these are actually the ones that, some of the ones that he gave me. Um, and if, oh, I was gonna go get a link to those things. If you guys wanna to try them out, I have, it's gonna be limited supply. I'm not gonna keep stocking these things. Uh, but I have, I wanna say, I don't know how many le I have left right now. There, there's, there's some left though, for sure. Um, but there's there's kind of limited. Oh, that's not the right thing. What am I doing? Huh? Oh, what the heck? That's probably why nobody. <laughs> uh, that's probably why I haven't sold as many as I thought because I don't have the right thing. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Oh man, I did something wrong in my menu system. The wine stopper blanks or what come up under casting supplies, wow. So, if you were confused earlier, uh, I will fix that at some point. <laughs> Here's a link to it. I'll, I'll have a link down in the show notes as well, uh, paste. So, the, for just the crinkles, and I have five, there are five colors, you get one of each in the little pack, and uh, they're available on my website. So, let me stop and see what you guys have to say about this thing. Let's see here. <laughs> Dress unveiling. Oh man, I don't even know if I want to know. Heavy cut, light cut, final polish. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the 105 is kind of a heavy cut, I think. I don't know. See, that's the problem is I don't, I don't understand like what micron level all these things are. So I just tried a bunch of different ones and the 105 seemed to, to give me pretty good results. I do think that, I know that they have, uh, for just Meguiar's, there's a 205, which is like a swirl remover, which should be even finer. Um, but th my thing is, I, I, as long as you've done a good amount of, you know, done proper sanding, polishing and everything, you've gotten all the scratches out uh, and, then, and then, you know, kept going with the buffing wheels, you really shouldn't need like 50 different steps. I, you know, I, I use the, the triple E, like, you know, I go through all the things up to about two, you know, somewhere around 2000 grit and then triple E white diamond and then some final polish. That should be good enough. You shouldn't need more, anything higher than that. So let's see here. Polishing compound. Yeah, I've, I've tried lots of different things. The only way to get sanding scratches out for me is to sand, you know, sand and polish with those pads, which is just basically like wet sand way high. And then the only thing that'll get rid of those that I've found consistently that gets rid of those is the triple E wheel on the buffing, buffing wheels. But I know that other people get, you know, pretty good results other ways. I just, it's, it, a lot of times it just depends on what works best for you. So anyway, thank you guys all for, for the, the kind words about this. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. It's uh, totally different than anything else I've ever made. Great work, except for the scratches all over it. There are some, uh, well, I don't know. There's not many. I think there are a few. I think this could pass as, as final though. Your display needs that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably we'll probably have this thing. I need to make a little stand, I guess, for it. I didn't think about that also. So I'll probably make a little stand thing, and then uh, we'll probably put it up up for, for grabs in my, my store. Gretchen should be getting the... Did she already get... I, 
she's been doing a lot of work getting pens and things. Gretchen does my fi like finished pieces and gets them listed. I just, at, at the end of the day, I have a lot of things that I need to do just for blanks. And I just wasn't posting anything that I'd made. So I just had boxes of pens and all kinds of stuff. And so she's like, oh, I can help out with that. So she does that. So she should have the, the um, what do I call it? The jawbreaker sphere should be, it's either going to be up soon or it's already up the egg, the big egg, uh, same thing. And then a bunch of pens. So she's, she just added a bunch of them. So these things are available on my website. I think it's just under the menu item pens. You'll see, you'll see all, all of these things. So anyway, guys, I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this. I know, like I said, I know that the sphere jig is not like the most amazing thing to watch. Um, but hopefully you guys kind of have an idea of how it works. You know, it's, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about it. It, it definitely will nail that curve, that, that spherical shape. And if you can get the, the post, the stem of your, your blank while it's still attached, kind of down far enough, you know, you can get your sphere like 85% dead on spherical with that thing or with any of these jigs really. Um, and then just, you know, chop it off. And then, and then as long as you mount it right, it's actually really easy just to knock off the nub. Um, but these things are fun. You know, everybody loves the spheres on, if, you know, if you're, you're thinking like, if you're thinking about numbers on, you know, like social media and all that stuff, people, the numbers are awesome on these. If you can get a little video of you doing something and then, you know, post something, um, people love spheres there. So it's, it's a good project. If you can add something interesting in the center of them, then you got, you know, a perfect project. So anyway, guys, I got to get going because Gretchen's going to yell at me otherwise. <laughs> Actually, she won't, but I'll yell at myself for being late. So, uh, time for some, <clears throat> excuse me, time for time for a drink of water. God, I can't talk. This is what happens when I keep talking all for two hours, three hours. I can't even sign off. My throat is dry. Anyway, guys, so thank you guys for joining the fun tonight. And the next stream is going to be Friday. We'll dunk something. I'm not sure. Actually, oh, I got a surprise. I got something in mind for Friday's stream that should be pretty fun to test out with resin. Something that I've kind of dabbled with a little bit, but not enough. Uh, it'll be fun to, to kind of play around with this stuff. Uh, something that I got from Bradley McAllister. If you guys don't follow him, he's the, the guy behind Spirecraft. Um, they have tools and all kinds of stuff, and he does turning, um, you know, like educational videos and stuff. So I got some interesting stuff from him sent in that I think will be fun. So I'll see you guys on Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. And we'll do a little bit of resin casting this time. And I'll have, I'll make sure that, you know, I'll get the, get the light and, and raking light and make sure that I've gotten all the scratches and everything out of this. But it, like I said, it is, it's the, the thing, the reason I can kind of guess that this thing has some scratches in it is it's not as shiny as some of the other things that I've seen. So that's, that kind of gives me a clue that I need to do a little bit more work on it. But anyway, guys, I hope you have a great night tonight. Have uh, it's not the weekend. It's my weekend. Uh, have a great day tomorrow and get in the shop, make some shavings or do some resin casting. And I will see you guys all on Friday. Oh, one, before I go, before I sign off, make sure that if you haven't got entered into the giveaway that's going on right now, I think there's a link down in the show notes already. Uh, head over to the video. It's the redo giveaway video. Uh, we got some pen blank molds uh, from Turner's Warehouse up for grabs, and I'll be doing the drawing uh, on Friday. Well, I'll, I'll announce the winner on Sunday, but I'll, I'll be drawing the winners. The, the, the entry period, I should say, stops on Friday at noon. So make sure you get entered into that. Uh, there's, man, this one's, so here's, here's just, I know that I'm supposed to leave, but I think this is kind of funny. So the last giveaway, we had two people that ended up get, getting entered. This time we have over, I think there's almost 600 comments at this point. So I think everything's working good on this giveaway. So uh, good luck to everybody in the giveaway. Get entered before uh, the giveaway period is, or the entry period is up. And I will see you guys on Friday. Have a good night.